These are our rest of season rankings for fantasy football. If you enjoy the rest of season rankings being in all one video, make sure you drop a like and make sure you're subscribed. It really helps us out. Those two things you can show some love, support the channel. Let's give you all of the information you need for the rest of the season. Let's start with the running back position here and start in the S tier. Pretty big S tier here. You're going to have Derrick Henry, who has consistently been good no matter what defense he's played. Saquon Barkley has been a little bit more boom or bust, but ultimately the upside, you cannot leave him out of this tier. Devon Achan with two attack of Iloa has been much better. He is a mid running back one on the year so far. B. John Robinson, uh, you can put him anywhere in this tier. B. John Robinson has had uh, a, a very good stretch of games that I think was a little, I think was a little bit underwhelming this week uh, in terms of what it was before 10 points compared to you know five six straight 20 point games and their worst game of all time yes so, so i'm not, not worried about that at all Bijan's gonna stay in the s tier right we're not gonna move him down after that uh performance this week and then christian mccaffrey obviously we know the upside christian mccaffrey has you've yet to see christian mccaffrey showcase the uh elite upside that he has and honestly the 49ers as a team haven't really shown that as well but 16 and 14 points in his first couple of games we all know what he's capable of and he's gotten seven and five targets in his first two games so that's the s tier for the rest of the season for running backs right now yeah a tier is also going to be huge you're going to have a bunch of guys that uh, you can make an argument for any of these guys in the A tier to potentially even be in the S tier. Uh, we just had to divide it up somehow. And it starts with Kyron Williams, who's been pretty underwhelming the last few weeks, but his volume is so consistent. We're not really worried about him rest of season. Uh, same with Alvin Kamara, not a great situation. Taysom Hill goes nuts for like 45 points. He has his annual nuclear game. Uh, Kamara is going to be fine. Joe Mixon goes crazy. He has 38 points on Monday Night Football. He's been unbelievable. I think Nico Collins coming back is going to even help out him in his production as well. Jameer Gibbs has been doing phenomenal. Even with David Montgomery, he's really shown that he does have that legitimate elite running back one upside, uh, and, and he's going to continue to be really successful this week against the Indianapolis Colts. Brees Hall bounces back against, guess who, the Colts. Uh, he's going to be very much boom bust. He's probably the only guy where I'm really comfortable having him in the A tier, and even though we might get criticism for that, he is very hit or miss just because of how inconsistent that offense is as a whole. Chase Brown, we listened to you guys. We got trash for not having Chase Brown higher. Here you go. He's in the A tier. He deserves to be in the A tier. He has looked phenomenal in an offense that is just crazy every single week and crazy productive it's really helped out chase brown and his production as well jt has just not had the ceiling that we expected him to have uh, but we're going to keep him at the bottom of the a tier optimistic that he can kind of bounce back he's still getting the volume had like 25 carries last week josh jacobs when he finds the end zone is going to score 20 plus points and then kenneth walker again more inconsistent very similar to jonathan taylor he can go off and then he can have a 10 to 15 point game and and just kind of be quiet for a few weeks he has a, a tough rest of season schedule so we're going to monitor that but i think he's a good value right now dropping down to the b tier here we'll start with isaiah pacheco um he is coming back this week and all of you pacheco owners have been waiting for that and he obviously cream hunt has been very productive in his absence we expect isaiah pacheco to pick back up uh, where he left off you honestly can make a pretty good case put him in the a tier uh james connor uh, you know, James Conner has continued to be productive this year, and I think rest of the season he still projects to be a very productive back. James Cook as well. James Cook didn't maintain the elite production we saw from him um, at the beginning of the season, but when you're looking at what he has done, he still has been productive. In fact, he, played, he faced the Chiefs last week and had a pretty good game. He's the running back 10 on the year. Uh, I, I am a little bit surprised. Where do we have him ranked both of us? We both have him, you know, as some mid running back too, so... I mean, there's an argument that you could have him higher, but again, he's yeah. more, he's one of the boom bust guys. So it's, yeah, he is. Yeah. You, you could make an argument to have him at the bottom of the A tier if you wanted to. Um, Aaron Jones is going to be next. Aaron Jones really, man. Like, I mean, I don't even know what to think anymore. The Vikings have had a little bit of a tough go at it recently. They obviously played the Titans last week and that didn't help. He's somebody that I dropped a little bit in my rankings though. We both have him in 18 because like, they're not even, I mean, like Cam Akers has gotten more usage, but it's like the, the, he cannot get in the end zone, man. It is, they've tried to give him carries on the goal line. He's just not good at that at all, um, which honestly, I shouldn't be too surprised. I mean, that's kind of how he was in Green Bay, but uh, especially the end of his career, we're getting to that point. Chuba Hubbard's going to stay pretty high for us, even with Jonathan Brooks coming back. They did financially commit to Chuba Hubbard, and Chuba Hubbard has been extremely productive. Again, he's going to be in a tier with all these guys. You can rank him anywhere in this tier you want. J.K. Dobbins continues to be productive on a team that has been overachieving and has been way better than we thought. Uh, we both have him at 20. David Montgomery on on one of the best offenses in the NFL. Uh, you have to continue to start him every week just because of the consistent touchdown upside and the consistent shootouts that the Detroit Lions are getting in. And then DeAndre Swift here last. And 
Connors just had a pretty solid season. He's like a mid running back two on the year. Um, and then in Chicago, obviously has a new offense coordinator. We'll see how that affects DeAndre Swift. But right now, I think he has a fairly positive outlook less of season. So yeah, then the top of the C tier, it's going to start with B Rob, the the most consistent high floor, low ceiling running back that you could ask for. He was very productive in his first game back after being out with injury for a few weeks, alongside Austin Eckler also being productive in the receiving game primarily. So uh, eyes on B Rob, he's looking pretty solid. He's going to continue to get those red zone carries and opportunities. Tyron Tracy and Tony Pollard, very similar situations. They're on awful offenses and any given week have touchdown upside and big play upside because they are pretty effective. It just depends on how competent their offense is going to look that week and, and that's asking a lot for two of the worst teams in the NFL. Uh, Rashad White, very similar to Austin Eckler, honestly, but I just like his outlook on a, on, a, on a team that really has come to be built around Rashad White somehow because Godwin and Mike Evans have been out. Evans is coming back. I don't think that's going to hurt Rashad White. I mean, we, we have him, we're being conservative with his ranking at RB what 26 here rest of season i think he's gonna have some good weeks i think he's gonna have some less than ideal weeks his production is definitely dependent on his receiving upside Najee harris gets the volume he's on pittsburgh Jalen warren is always going to eat into his workload george pickens and russell wilson have have been clicking on all cylinders that passing game looks more dynamic than it ever has ramondre stevenson is going to be at the tail end of this tier he's probably the most boom bust running back in this tier honestly with the lowest floor by far another poor offense where again any given week given his red zone opportunity he, he can he can do really well for you and dropping down here to the d tier we're going to start with rico dowdle um rico again the offensive situation for him doesn't look great rest of seasons so why he's going to be here brooks we would have had higher did not see this juba hubbard thing coming and that's why he's going to have to stay here bucky irving is technically the running back two from a production standpoint in tampa bay but he's still putting up um he is still putting up pretty good numbers i'm going to see where he's finished on the season i feel like he's still getting double figures almost every game so running back 27 right now in the year so i think he has a flex option rest of season yeah he uh, is for sure <laughs> Especially Honestly, this I feel better about him than most of these guys. So, uh, especially freaking Nick Chubb. Nick Chubb. I mean, I am rooting for Nick Chubb. I hope Nick Chubb uh, eventually does something. When you're looking at what he's done so far this year, it's been pretty much nothing at all. Yeah. So, I mean, we'll see. He's not even really getting. Yeah, that was his most efficient game by far. Yeah, he only played 30 percent of snaps. That was the problem. <laughs> so, um, yeah. so we'll see with Nick Chubb. But I don't have any expectations. Travis Etienne's. I, I mean, he's butt. There, there's he is butt. There's no <laughs> other way to put it. He's butt. He has killed my flock team. He's butt. Uh, that's mm. the kind of fantasy football analysis you're going to get from us. And if you like it, then cool. If you don't like and subscribe, darn. Yeah, right. Uh, and then Austin Eckler. Austin Eckler has been very streamable this year. Um, he is the running back 24 overall. Obviously, rest of the season, we have some guys that have higher upside than him. But honestly, uh, I can see pretty good reason to rank him even over most of the guys in this tier. So I think if you wanted to move him up anywhere in the C tier or the D tier, I think I would be cool, totally fine with that. So Yep, definitely could. Top of the F tier, Kareem Hunt will keep him in here, give him his respect for being productive while Pacheco has been out. Maybe they phase Pacheco in. We're... We, we don't really know uh, Pacheco coming off of a broken leg. We've seen how that impacts running backs in the past, <clears throat> Tony Pollard. Um, but with Kareem Hunt, uh, he's just going to continue to be phased out, and his upside is so dang capped. Audric SMA was usurped once again by Javante Williams after you know they made it a point to give him more carries and less opportunities to Javante. Uh, Javante, who is also in this tier, uh, just behind Tank Bigsby, who is no more reliable than Travis Etienne rest of the season. And that offense is awful. Same with Alexander Madison. Jalen Warren is just, he can't do much while Najee Harris is getting the opportunity and volume that he's getting. Uh, he, he's, uh, Najee is such a big body running back that you can rely on in the, in the red zone where, you know, he may or may not get a touchdown here or there, but they're just, they're going to default to giving the ball to Najee in, in the red area. And that's when it counts where you can actually have some productive upside. Warren's good in the receiving game, but he's just not a weekly reliable asset. Tyler Algier, again, he is somebody that could at any time start getting volume and be productive in an offense that is pretty good uh, Bijan has taken the majority of the work there this year Trey Benson has started to get more carries in the second half of the year but we do expect James Conner to maintain the running back one role there Zach Charbonnet kind of the same thing he's on the field a lot but you don't see him getting a ton of usage um, so he's not really been fantasy productive it's kind of the same thing as last year Ty J Spears has had injuries this season but he has somebody to keep an eye on because Tony Pollard also has some injuries now Raheem Mostert has been pretty much nothing Devin Singletary is pretty much nothing as well um, and then Braylon Allen is a guy that is a handcuff but really you don't feel comfortable starting him right now so so let's jump over to talk about some wide receivers now. I'll start in the S tier here. Uh, Chase, obviously, could be in a tier of his own here, has been the best wide receiver this season. Put him in a tier here with Justin Jefferson, who has been really solid. Amon Ross St. Brown, who has been great. Nico and Collins, who has been uh, Nico Collins, obviously came back. He only had a 10-point game. But 
he obviously projects better rest of season. Yes. And then Puka Nakua, since, and since he's been back and been playing full games, he's been very productive as well. All, all of these guys are guys I think that if you have them on your team, you have an alpha wide receiver. So. Yep, top of the eights here, you're going to have a bunch of guys that have a lead upside any given week. They just don't show as much consistency as the guys that we're seeing in the S tier. you got Drake London at the top. Falcons are kind of in a little bit of a rut right now. Hopefully they figure it out after this bye week. Then A.J. Brown, also not been himself recently, really since he came back from the hamstring injury. Hopefully he can pick it up at the re- at the end of the season. We're betting on it. We have him at wide receiver seven. Cooper Cup remains uh, continues to be productive even with Puka Nakua on the field. Uh, as long as Matt Stafford is playing quarterback for the Rams. Cooper Cup is going to be a factor when he's on the field. Garrett Wilson had a down week against the Colts. We would expect him to bounce back. He's going to be fine. He, he's he been a top six wide receiver uh, really since his slow start this season. He's He's been phenomenal, and I think Devontae Adams has actually helped him quite a bit, which we did not expect. He's, he's doing great. Tyreek Hill finally shows signs of life. Everybody Woo! give him a hand. Woo! Here we go. He yeah. is not dead. Uh, Tyreek Hill found his way back into the top 12. I, I, I am so glad that we didn't entirely give up on him we waited one one more week than a lot yeah, of people did. did and it paid off because uh he he's looking like he's going to be okay and then terry mclaurin and mike evans mike evans i want to touch on him because terry mclaurin is so consistent mike evans is going to be the top option for baker mayfield objectively he's i think gonna mm. really take the fantasy world potentially by storm know, they got a lot of healthy. other talented wide receivers there you know yeah all, right it, they got a all, lot of deep wide receiver room there all all those talented guys um <laughs> mike evans is is going to go crazy uh, as as long as he can, you know, deal and deal with and manage his hamstring injury. George Pickens, if I'm not kidding, if you wanted to put George Pickens at the top of this A tier over everyone else, I would have zero issue with it whatsoever. He has been lights out since Russell Wilson came in and is playing at quarterback for the Steelers. We're going to start in the B tier with Malik Neighbors at the top. Obviously, the quarterback change in New York. You've got Tony Soprano playing uh, quarterback for the New York Giants now. It basically a mob leader <laughs> at this point. DeVito and his agent and, and, you know. So who knows? Maybe the Italian will really help Malik Neighbors here. I'm rooting for him, but um, I do love myself a good mob story. T. Higgins is going to be next on this list. When T. Higgins has been on the field, he's been averaging 18.5 points per game. But T. Higgins needs to stay on the field. I really need him to stay on the field personally. It's an offense that continually finds themselves in shootouts, which they are losing. And because they are continually playing from behind, they are continually passing the ball. That's why Chase Brown has been productive. Chase Brown has not been productive because he's running the ball and getting four rushing touchdowns. He's been getting eight targets (laughs) because they're throwing the ball. So uh, T. Higgins, you know, rest of the season, I like him. Marvin Harrison Jr. I think if you're buying pieces of this Cardinals offense rest of the season, I have him six spots higher than Nathan. I'm very high on Marv rest of the season. I think he's um, going to be great. I, I, th- I, I think he is going to the same tier. I don't even for, disagree with you. Uh, he's primed for a very good rest of the season. DK Metcalf as well coming back. You know, uh, JSN's been good there. It hasn't really affected DK. Obviously, DK has to stay healthy. That's the main thing. CD Lamb, he did have 18 points uh, this week without Dak Prescott, which is good. It was great to see. Uh, still, no, I think I still think he's a wide receiver two rest of the season. And then Zay Flowers, who has been uh, close to wide receiver one production for a lot of this year. He did have the garbage time touchdown, but he's still the wide receiver eight on the year. The targets have dropped a little bit. Six targets in each of his last three games. That's lower than it was. And only, only really, you know, only 11 receptions total in his last three games. But he has had three touchdowns. So there is a hint of unsustainability here from Zay Flowers. I'm not going to lie to you, especially because early in the season, he was producing without the touchdowns. Now, without the touchdowns, he would not be producing. It's really hard to predict yeah, what his so target volume We'll see be. where his role ends up settling. It's going to depend on the type of games they're in, I guess. But um, he does have a pretty good rest of season schedule, to be honest with you. So. Yeah, C tier at the top, you're going to have JSN. Honestly, if you want to make an argument to put him in the B tier, I wouldn't have an issue with it. We just have him at the top of the C tier because he is playing alongside DK Metcalf, and I think that is going to hurt his potential upside rest of season. Uh, Cortland Sutton has been really really good just exceeded expectations so is Bo Nix um, he's really reaped the benefits of Bo Nix kind of coming into his own as a rookie quarterback in the NFL uh, love the outlook for the Broncos as a whole love the outlook for Sutton rest of the season Devontae Adams again cap ceiling with Garrett Wilson who's going to be getting a majority of that production Devontae Smith and Jaden Reed are both kind of wide receiver two level assets that any given week can drop 20 any given week any given week can drop five uh, they're very very, very unpredictable, but again, they can they can win you a week at, at any point, and they're, they're pretty solid talents. Debo Samuel is going to continue to fall down our rankings until he actually produces. He has not been producing. Josh Downs, we're, 
we're going to be very conservative with. Josh Downs is actually like a mid-wide receiver too on the season at the moment, and that's with him missing the first couple of games of the year. Um, Anthony Richardson is going to hurt his volume upside on a week-to-week basis, so he's going to be more dependent on touchdowns every single week to drop you know, 15, 20 points. Uh, he does have some nice big play upside, but it's just going to be tough to rely on Josh Downs consistently week in and week out while AR is playing quarterback until he can start to consistently throw an accurate football. Jawan Jennings is going to be at the tail end of this tier. If you wanted to have him higher, I don't have an issue with it. But he did have a really good game with George Kittle out. When George Kittle's back in, the, the overall dynamics of that offense changed significantly, not to mention CMC is on the up, has been looking really good. So you've got CMC, Kittle, and Debo, and then Jawan Jennings schematically really is going to be that kind of fourth option in, in the receiving game. So uh, this is betting that Debo Samuel is going to pick it up a little bit over Jawan Jennings because we have Debo ranked over Jawan Jennings, but in the same tier. So if you wanted to argue otherwise, we're not going to fight you on it. We'll start with Darnell Mooney in the D tier here. Uh, Mooney obviously has been a wide receiver one so far this season. Mooney's not going to be a wide receiver one. We're not going to get much fight on this. And I don't, um, I don't think so either. And honestly, you know, he's, he's battling a hamstring injury as well. Jacoby Myers, we're very high on. I think he does project to be, you know, the wide receiver two, wide receiver three range. He's going to get a lot of targets. I think he has wide receiver one weekly upside. But you are going to have weeks like last week where Brock Bowers is just so good that he takes <laughs> everything away from, from Jacoby Myers. So that that is going to be the reality of the situation there. You never know what, what old Gardner is going to do. Uh, Tank Dell. With Nico back, I still do think Tank Dell can be productive. The problem is we've seen Tank Dell being the second wide receiver on this team multiple times this season, and he is the wide receiver 41 on the season. Yeah. He's still, I mean, the targets are still there, but they're with the type of targets he's getting, they're not always leading to a lot of fantasy points. So uh, Brian Thomas, we have him ranked significantly lower than where he is right now when you're talking about his fantasy production. He's still the wide receiver 11 on the season. And uh, How's it's not even possible it's the, because he did have 13 points last game, but you know, six and three before that he had he had those points because he actually did have seven targets, five or no, seven. I guess they, haven't had the buy yet. they haven't had the buy. That's, buy. Part, That's of part of it. Of it. But he, he rests the season. You do have Tennessee, the Jets, Tennessee again. Oh, like he's got some tougher matchups. And honestly, the, the situation there is not great for Brian Thomas. So we're, we're particularly lower on Brian Thomas than some people are. Uh, Lab McConkey has continued to be better. However, they're still passing the ball less than every other team in the league so far. He's the wide receiver 18 uh, so far on the year. We have him here uh, at you know, as a mid wide receiver three, so he's a mid wide receiver two right now. We expect that's going to take a little bit of a dip. Um, and honestly, some of these guys ahead of him are just guys that we're a little bit more comfortable with. And then you could honestly, honestly, with Lab McConkey, you could make the argument for him to be higher. Yeah. And DJ Moore, he's you know, on the up in our rankings too. So. Yes. DJ Moore, again, you. <sighs> want to see it from dj Moore. he had 13 points last game which was better than what he had had but he's still the wide receiver 29 so like i will have to see a little bit more before we move him up our see our rest of season rankings but right now he's going to sit here at the bottom of the d tier yeah f tier you got a ton of veterans here and then some boom bust guys uh you got d hop and amari cooper who just haven't really figured it out and completely in their new roles in buffalo and kansas city cedric tillman kind of comes back to earth Again, if you wanted to have Tillman higher than this, I wouldn't hate you for it. Judy goes nuclear. He has, you know, like 20 – he gets like 18 points off of one touchdown because of all that yardage. Um, I'm, I'm exaggerating, but he, he had like a 90-yard touchdown. So uh, that's – not going to happen every single week. Tillman still got a decent amount of volume. He honestly might be okay, and we may end up moving him back up our rankings. Calvin Ridley uh, going to be so inconsistent with Will Levis, who is awful. Uh, Khalil Shakir going to be the most consistent guy in this tier. Very high floor. He, he, he's like the, the wide receiver version of B-Rob. He has a very high floor, very low ceiling. You know exactly what you're going to get from Shakir pretty much every single week with his target volume and what he's able to do after the catch. He just isn't going to have a ridiculous amount of touchdown upside. And then Jamison Williams is going to get you 20 or is going to get you two points. Uh, this week, I would expect J-Mo is probably going to have a pretty solid week against the Colts secondary, and that'll be reflected in our ultimate rankings for week 12. Start with Keon Coleman here in the G tier. He's got to stay healthy. He's got to get his wrists healthy. But when he has been on the field, he's had some upside recently. Jordan Addison, kind of the same thing. It's when he's getting a touchdown. He has three touchdowns on the year. And honestly, that's going to have to go up for him to improve his stock in our rankings. Romo Dunze has, you know, Romo Dunze has been solid for a couple of weeks here recently. And again, you do have the new offense coordinator there. But uh, in the last couple of weeks, he's had games of 12, 5, and 15 points. So, I mean, he is, he had 10 targets in his last game. And that's with Keenan Allen with DJ Moore in the field. So we'll keep an eye on that. Maybe move him up our rest of the season rankings next week. Romeo Dubs, hit, miss, hit, miss. I, I don't know. I mean, he on the season, uh, he, he's not been fantastic. He's the wide receiver 56. 
Uh, he has eight points in his last two games, uh, and then obviously that includes the bye. So I, I don't. I feel like he has some upside, but I don't think anybody's going to be mad that we're ranking him this low. Jalen Waddle uh, and Jerry Judy are both guys that honestly, like Jalen Waddle on the season. Just to give you some context, a guy who's being drafted in the second round is the wide receiver sixty, wide receiver sixty on the season. It's quite unfortunate. Jerry Judy. Wow. Uh, Jerry Judy is better than that by a lot he's the wide receiver 35 in the season but he does have a couple boom games we'll see with judy judy has 11 targets in each of his last two games so it could be something to monitor there we might have to move him up next week so yep. but for now we're going to keep these guys here and, and temper our expectations pity's going to be at the top of the h tier uh his his ceiling is just severely capped with ar without ar he's dealing with an injury with a back injury and he's still playing through it um good for him uh, as a teammate as a as a true player but from a fantasy perspective he's basically irrelevant wando robinson xavier worthy quentin johnston ricky pearsall all going to be very touchdown dependent and what they're able to do on a week-to-week basis keenan allen and tyler lockett are just old guys jalen mcmillan let's see if he can kind of string anything together with mike evans coming into that uh wide receiver room again he's going to take over that alpha wide receiver spot maybe that opens up the field a little bit for Jalen McMillan and he can get some nice touchdown upside Demario Douglas an exclusive slot wide receiver he can drop 15 any given week and then Xavier Leggett um, who is exclusively a red zone threat like that's literally what he is and how he's operated uh, this season so far Bryce Young has shown a little bit of signs of life as well and that's benefited Xavier Leggett and and that offense as a whole all right let's jump over to tight ends two guys in the S tier Bowers Kittle Kelsey hasn't shown consistently he should be there but he's going to be at the top of the A tier Bowers and Kittle they've been elite elite this season Kittle has to stay healthy and Bowers has to deal with the quarterback situation there, which has clearly not mattered. So, <laughs> Yeah. Uh, Kelsey, McBride, and Joku and Otten are, are the top four guys in the A tier here. Um, every single one of them, every, any given week, can drop 20. They can also just have some disappointing uh, weeks that aren't going to help you it really at all not as consistently as Kittle and Bowers are so that's why they're not in the S tier uh, Kelsey was very disappointing against Buffalo specifically Otten we have him a little bit lower we'll see what he's able to do with Mike Evans coming back I wouldn't be shocked if his volume was cut in half because Mike Evans is that good I wouldn't be shocked if his volume stayed the same because they still are pretty depleted offensively Hawkinson comes back to earth we move him down a couple of spots keep him in the A tier we're not going to move him outside of the A tier again the Vikings as a whole have kind of been struggling a little bit JJ has not been doing well the last couple of weeks Aaron Jones has not been producing Addison has needed touchdowns to be even remotely productive so not worried about Hawkinson rest of season I I think they're just gonna have to figure this out and and they're gonna be okay offensively um and then the B tier yeah uh we'll start with Mark Andrews he's been moving up he'll continue to move up he's been somewhat productive although last game he really wasn't and, and really, didn't expect him and to and really Pittsburgh. really what I'm looking at here is the snap counts he did have 60 percent of snaps played um and, and you know three targets it's not terrible you did have likely back in this game so for him to play 60 percent of snaps with likely is better than it was before the buy um but it's still not not before the buy they haven't had their buy yet but uh it's still something that we're kind of monitoring like should we keep him up or not evan ingram's gonna be next and he's been a little bit hit or miss but we'll have to see how he does playing with mac jones he's still getting targets it looks like he had seven targets this week um but but we'll have to monitor that one zach Ertz has continued to put together some pretty solid games uh he had seven targets this week caught six of those he had 18 points actually because he had a touchdown as well as the tight end seven on the year yeah, so i think this him. is something that is sustainable because that's a pretty good offense for him dallas goddard when he has been on the field has taken some production away from guys like devonta smith this year uh the the if he stays in the field part is the important part but last week he had uh five targets got all five of them. He had 11 points so he's been a streamable tight end this year as well uh and then kyle pitts and kyle pitts you know there was a second there where i thought kyle pitts was like back and really in his last three games he's gotten two points nine points and one point so <laughs> i think it's safe to say he's not necessarily back uh i definitely I, not consistent you don't feel you're still starting you just don't feel super comfortable about it at this point yeah then in the c tier uh we're gonna have Kraft, laporta and kincaid at the top of this tier every single one of these guys just continues to fall down our rankings they're not getting consistent enough volume or opportunity or just straight up production period uh jake ferguson had a concussion i think in the middle of the houston game we'll see if he even plays this week and then other streamable guys cole Komet, hunter henry pat fryermuth uh Taysom hill even you could include him in this list uh, any given week they can do really well or they can score you nothing and it's whatever because they're streamable tight ends anyways right <laughs> all right let's go to quarterbacks now let's finish this up lamar jackson josh allen jalen hurts at the top of the s tier here uh rushing upside and honestly like Jaden daniels has moved out of this tier because he's just not been that great recently from a production standpoint they just they just run the ball in the red zone that's just what they yeah, do so it and really it's not him. his fault it just makes him less fancy 
productive. So, yep. A tier, we will have Jaden Daniels at the top of the A tier with Kyler Murray right behind him. Kyler Murray, I think, is on the up. Jaden Daniels kind of neutral. Uh, Joe Burrow is going to continue to be one of the most productive quarterbacks with his ridiculous amount of passing volume. That offense um, is so electric and, and so effective, even though that team might miss the playoffs, which is crazy to say. Uh, Brock Purdy is also going to be at the tail end of this tier. He is probably the most consistent quarterback outside of you know your high-end guys like Lamar Jackson and Jalen Hurts. One of the most consistent non-rushing upside quarterbacks in the league this year uh he's been phenomenal so uh b tier are gonna start with love yeah um and love's been good when he's been on the field this season he needs to stay on the field baker yeah. mayfield um has also been very good even without you know his star wide receivers which honestly was a little bit surprising to us bo nix is a quarterback one on the up. Uh, on the season and he is on the up in our rankings so he's now entered uh the top 10 patrick mahomes is going to stay up here he's the quarterback 13 on the season so he's been fine and then jared goff uh he dropped 34 last week which is really the first like dominant fantasy performance he's had i still don't think you're comfortable starting him but it is worth putting up here just because the offense is so good and they could start getting into more games where they're actually throwing the ball a lot yeah darnold has proven to be pretty boom bust this season but he has really good weeks 23 25 point weeks he's coming off a 23 point game where they didn't even look that great offensively uh, he still is qb12 on the year right now so i'm not too worried about him a lot of people are shorting him in his production um, i'm not going that far yet we still have him at qb13 and then drake may has rushing upside he's still learning as a rookie kirk cousins is going to be more hit or miss geno smith same situation justin herbert is going to continue to move up our rankings he's looked pretty good the last month uh nothing like super elite production wise but consistent reliable he's even getting some rushing touchdowns as well um, and then matt stafford is going to be in this next little tier i'll just do this too uh with cj stroud and Tua. each pocket passers each one of these guys not a ridiculous amount of upside staff will be at the top because he's actually shown that he can put up 25 points in a week uh Tua and stroud have not demonstrated that stroud has only had one 20 plus point game this season last two here for quarterbacks caleb williams aaron Rodgers, anthony richardson who we have in this tier now we had to put him in the rest of the season but we're going to be pretty conservative with him uh Derek carr james winston and russell wilson we didn't even put tommy devito on here but i feel like you're going to forgive us for that one so there you go rest season rankings wanted to wrap those up for you we'll have those updated again for you next week again if you enjoy make sure you drop a like and subscribe well, we got a lot of engagement on our last video so we're like hey we'll do it again they clearly liked that one so appreciate you guys doing that thank you so much for joining us and we'll see you later